so good management is needed to ensure that every pupil has access to national curriculum IT. What, which picture? One on one, night, one on one. These pupils are using IT to communicate information by telling a story based around computer generated pictures. This is a big motivator because the picture's there, they can be moved about, they can be got rid of if you don't like it, they can be added to, and therefore the discussion can flow. And the fact that they don't have to use written language initially, that they've just got the pictures there, is a big plus for us. The dragon wanted the present of the queen and the knight came to help her. Later in the lesson, another group comes to listen to their story. Anna? The wizard came and all men and the king and queen's castle is there, but the king is happy and the queen is there. The queen said, oh no, the dragon is going to eat us. Yes sir, can you tell me what that is? Year two pupils from the class next door are working with the same programme, but they're using both pictures and text, so the task is more complicated. C or C. They were given a specific task, which was to write an alphabet book for the year one children. The year one children know the programme. Now they will have seen pictures with text as well, so that's a big step for them. And you've seen how keen they were to read the words as they came up to guess what the next letter was going to be. Who's going to read it? Adam, right? Adam, nice and loud. Ah. What are they doing? Eating. Eating, which begins with an E. And what are they saying? Yum, yum, yum. yum. yum, yum. yum. Today we're going to do Pip Silent. Do you remember him? Yeah. Okay, we'll press the level, thankfully. Anna McCarthy's pupils have severe learning difficulties. Right, what's this? They've recently been on a trip to an island. Oh, and whose island is it? Pip's. Pip's island, right. Can anybody find the volcano? Where's the volcano? She's decided to use a computer program as the focus for problem solving and communication activities linked to the trip. Lee, can you read it? This is the cave. Do not be afraid. It says, do not be afraid. What you're going to do is you're going to pretend to be on the island. What makes the island program valuable for Anna and her special needs pupils? They can use the program without having the teacher beside them. It helps tremendously with their independence. What do you think the next thing Pip would say? The use of IT helps the group to create and amend an illustrated story. Right. He'd say, I am... They can use it to develop their independent writing skills, provided you've got the appropriate flashcards or the overlay cards or however What's you wish to teach them the reading skills. Island, right. I am on an island, Pip. Me. <laughs> it's also a, a great visual stimulus in that our children are very visually orientated and they need the visual aspect in their education. So what have you done? Why won't? Yeah. So how would you change that? As pupils develop their ability to communicate information, they'll be faced with more complex tasks and equipment. These pupils are producing a European newspaper. Stories from abroad are coming in through a modem which links a school computer to a European news agency. When this finishes, you ought to send another one. Mm -hmm. Any idea how to get French? Their teacher has arranged for the whole class to work in the library where they have access to a range of IT equipment. Right, I'll scan this stuff. One group has chosen to use a scanner to transfer illustrations into the computer. Should be coming up all right. Do you want to save it to this now? Yeah. To this guy. Okay. Fast forward it now. Yeah, there's lots of want to see There we go. These girls are searching a videotape for a suitable picture to illustrate an article and are using a digitizer to transfer the picture to the computer. They're then able to tailor the picture to their needs. Okay. So it's a bit darker yet. Yeah, that's better. That's OK. Right. I should save it now. Save it. Yeah, then we can give it them. Right, do you want to pass that on? <laughs> Picture of the car. Yeah. There's a disc with the car on. Right. With a desktop publishing package, text and illustrations are combined to create the newspaper page. Hopefully, make it bigger. Yeah. 
As well as using their language and IT skills to create a high quality product, they're gaining experience in how IT is used outside school. The moment you try to involve IT, they really want to be part of it. It's the next step up, if you want. It's the modern language of the 1990s, and all the children these days must become fluent in that language. So, involving IT helps pupils to be more creative in the ways they communicate and organize information, and better at exploring and refining ideas across the whole of the curriculum. John, how are we going to... Information technology also helps when it comes to collecting and analysing information. For example, about milk products, which is the focus of a half-term project for Jill Clark's class. We need to escape. Please, will you escape? These reception pupils are producing a questionnaire to gather information about milk deliveries. Implementing the national curriculum has led Jill to extend her use of IT into data handling. The IT fitted in very well because we wanted to handle a lot of information and I think to have handled it without using a computer it would have been very tedious. It's just another activity within the classroom that the children are able to administer for themselves. The concept keyboard makes it simple for them to put information into the computer. Once the information is stored, they can retrieve it and use the computer to analyse and present the information, although computer printouts were not the only way they chose to display the results. As part of their GCSE history course, Year 10 pupils are investigating the growth of their local town. They've gathered information from a variety of sources and are using a computer database to store it. Right. 24. Using IT to analyse the data makes it easier for them to identify patterns and relationships yep and to test their ideas about the growth of Mythamroid. The project also enables pupils to consider the applications and effects of IT. The second computer item that we have is a database on the census. It actually gives their, their coursework an extra dimension as well. It's a piece of evidence that they can evaluate and they can actually start making judgments about the database as a source of information. Well, we can't really be sure how accurate it is. It's, it's only a sample, really, and it's only half the census. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's like the only evidence we've got. Of course, this might not be accurate because it's been copied out. It's been passed and it's, down. It's been copied out several times. Well, I mean, once you're onto the computer, it's better to have it on here because you can, like, get the information off in, like, different displays. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot easier, yeah. You have to spend no, ages fine, pouring over. Yeah. Yeah, over. Just down the corridor, Sarah Cotton's Year 7 maths class is working on angles and bearings. Should we move or don't move? Yeah. Some pupils are working in a group with a modelling programme as part of both the maths and the IT yeah, curriculum. Yeah, yeah. In the mountain rescue programme, there's a lot of work on angles, compass bearings, grid references, some work on contours, which is now a part of the maths curriculum, as well as geography, um, estimation, and of course it allows them to develop problem-solving techniques. Where are we trying to get to the top of that mountain? Yeah. Just go up there. Yeah. Go we do compass bearing. Compass bearing. And then do not do uh, about 45. 45. Yeah. Yes, yes. Found it. Found it. Yeah, found it. Rather than taking her whole class off to the computer room, Sarah arranges oh, to have one or two computers in her own room when she needs them. Having computers in the classroom allows the work to become more relevant because they can be um, sent to a computer to use some software at the time at which it's appropriate. At Holyport Manor School, many of the pupils are working towards national curriculum attainment targets. IT is being used to broaden the scope of an investigation being carried out by Sue Segger's science group. We put a certain amount in each jar. You, you came up with it. What was it? She's arranged for three pupils to use a modelling programme to explore a habitat in more detail. <coughs> Sarah 
As well as encouraging observation and communication, the program lets them investigate the effect of simple variables, like time of day. <laughs> the programs of study for IT capability provide a framework for using simulations and spreadsheets with pupils of all abilities to help them explore real-world situations and test out their own ideas. Another group of Sioux special needs pupils is measuring the temperature of jars of water left in different places by using a temperature probe instead of a thermometer. The children had remarked about the different changes in temperature when we visited the pool in two different seasons. We use the temperature probe because if you're using a thermometer, especially when the results are going to be fairly close to each other, they're all going to be within two or three degrees, a temperature probe is excellent. Our children would find it very hard to read an, a normal thermometer. And start their life cycle, don't they? The inclusion of computer control in the curriculum has given Chris Sackmarkis a vehicle for developing a range of skills. You think four? They're using a computerized buggy, which they're imagining is a hungry caterpillar looking for leaves. What do you need to do, last of all? <laughs> Tell it to go. go, that's it. They've already talked about everyday things which can be controlled. Now they're finding out how to control where their caterpillar will go. What exactly are the pupils learning? We're wow, using it bad. to estimate distances, we're using it to measure, to add and subtract. The children are gaining an idea of angle and of shape and space. How are we They're also learning about the need to give precise instructions in the right order. Initially, I find that uh, I need to put in quite a bit of, of teacher talk with the children. Let's let David have an idea first. 30. Press the, the arrow then. You press the arrow. Once she's got them started, Chris can monitor their progress and provide new IT experiences which build on what they've learned. Children, even at the age of five, can in fact learn an awful lot on their own by hands-on experience. I can then make the tasks more rigorous. I can ask more of them. They can become more complicated. Moving on from there, children work on um, a program such as Delta, where they are moving a turtle on the screen and they are actually having to write the commands. They are having to write the programs before anything will happen. At Pool, implementing National Curriculum IT has led to the school's first use of control technology. The problem of designing and building an extra greenhouse was the idea of Steve Smith, the school's design and technology coordinator. He wanted the class to think beyond the construction of the greenhouse to ways of controlling conditions inside. These pupils have linked light and temperature detectors to a computer to control mechanisms like this automatic watering system. We type in the commands, controlling the lift with the input box and output boxes, and they're attached to the computer. When the light sensitive switch goes dark, the lift lifts up and water goes through the pipe down to water the plants. Yeah. Is it coming out now? Yeah. The IT element has been challenging, but it's been a huge amount of fun and I'd certainly use it again, um, particularly if, if, the, if the solutions and outcomes crop up naturally. I think that's the key issue. The children should be able to see a natural use of information technology. The measurement and control strand of IT capability can provide both the structure and the mechanism for tackling problems in a logical way. At Crown Wood, they're rapidly outgrowing the school. The problem is too little space for the increasing number of pupils. This has given Maggie Dixon's Year 3 class the chance to explore and evaluate some applications of IT, from simple word processing to the uses of computer-aided design. Well, we've been looking at some ar architect's plans and then we've been doing um, a plan of our school and then 
as it is now and then we're going to uh, think of ideas for an extension. The project developed from a link between the school and a local architect who comes in to show the class how computer-aided design helps him in his work. As well as using traditional methods, some of the class are learning how IT offers an alternative way of tackling the problem. Put a box around it. I wanted the children to get the idea of the versatility of the computer for drawing. Uh, not to replace manual skills, but to show how you can move things around and so on. And the children have learnt to use the 2D drawing system to design the windows and, and also take a bit further the idea of the scale and how fit things fit in. Okay. Want to have another go? Okay. IT has many different uses, and particular applications will often draw on other strands, such as handling and communicating information. The new first years, when they come, they won't know much about the school. And so we've made up this, con this disc, and it's going to have loads of information about the school and the teachers and subjects on it. I love the information we know already about the times, clubs, and we went round to the teachers and asked them themselves. So they gave us all the information for that. So before I came to Camden, I'd actually been teaching for 10 years. Once they've done their field work, the next task is to structure the information. And then we decided to write out a plan, that plan. Okay, just like a rough sort of plan showing what's going to be, like, in the contents. It has here, like, teachers. Um, and you click the teachers and you'll find, like, their profiles and photos and things. If people want to quickly find out exactly what they need, um, say, for instance, they want to find a plan to find the room they want to go to, they can instantly just, like, get into the system and find out where to go quickly. Pupils come across all sorts of applications of IT. They need to relate these uses to what they're doing in school and to think about the effects of IT on their lives. As they develop their capabilities, they'll become more confident in using IT for a range of purposes and be able to use more advanced skills for more complex tasks. And you can like, make different patterns with them. They'll also have a growing understanding of the value and limitations of IT. But this all depends on good teaching and good management. The role of the head teacher and senior staff is crucial in leading and supporting the implementation of the IT programs of study. I think as head teacher I have to uh, enthuse, I have to encourage and I have to support making sure that there is enough uh, information technology, hardware and software uh, for pupils and teachers to use. Make sure that we have a clear view as a school as to where information technology fits within our curriculum and what we want, both of our teachers and of our pupils. At the moment, we are in a position where members of staff are becoming used to the information technology and the machinery. We are coming to terms with the uh, five strands, what they mean and how we're going to deliver them. In a year's time, we will be able to say that all students have had access to IT, the members of staff will understand where we are, uh, and we will then move on to the next step, which is the coverage and the achievement. Like Calder, Camden is introducing national curriculum IT in many subjects. Their aim is to enhance teaching by making learning more practical, giving pupils access to new experiences and enabling them to focus on skills such as analysis, evaluation, prediction and forming ideas. Using IT helps pupils take charge of their own learning, work at their own pace and raise the standard of their work. The foundation for developing these characteristics is laid in key stages one and two, so it's equally important that primary teachers have a clear idea of what they wish to achieve by teaching and using IT. We aim to develop confidence and competence, that's in both the children and the staff, in the use of the computer for a variety of purposes. We aim to have the children and the staff seeing the computer as a tool in the classroom, so that it's there all the time and it can be used across the curriculum to encourage work of high quality.
We see information technology as a support for the whole curriculum, not essentially as a separate subject. And it's part of children learning about using skills for life. At key stages three and four, one of the main challenges is handling something which isn't taught as a subject. So senior staff have a crucial role on the school's IT coordinating committee. We are there because each faculty probably will be trying to press forward their own point, their own systems. And we're there to try and set an overview of the whole school. We imagine a child going through the school and getting the same consistent approach from every department. At responsibility for teaching IT lies with a number of departments. Responsibility for ensuring that national curriculum requirements are met lies with the senior management team and the IT coordinator, Darren Cochlan. What I've done as chair of the working party is ask departments in the first instance to say where they could teach, for example, spreadsheets or word processing. We've then created a list of skills that each pupil needs to be taught in order to satisfy that particular strand. We've got the fairly rigid schemes of work where we should know where the provision has been offered throughout the years seven to nine so that we will be able to monitor the provision and go on to assess from that point of view. Developing IT capability means building up new skills and knowledge for pupils and for teachers. I think that uh, many teachers are quite apprehensive about the use of information technology and I think that it, there is a great need to provide uh, adequate and appropriate training. So it's attempting to make a quiet approach to the staff all the time. Give them one piece of software, let them become familiar with it and then once they're familiar with that piece of software try and introduce a second or a third piece of software. What teachers really seem to want is in-class training. What we want to do is to get teachers who know the practical implications, they know the problems, and so we'll be able to get teachers teaching teachers and showing us good practice. With Darren's help, PE teacher Cheryl Bushy has looked at how IT is used in subjects such as geography to measure and analyse information. Now she's using it with her own pupils to see what advantages it offers and what the practical problems are. The pupils are using a meter to measure their pulse rates before and after exercise. This is the first time we've actually used IT. It's been quite challenging. It's been difficult in using the computer and only having one computer at the moment to so many children. The information is entered into a spreadsheet designed by Darren and Cheryl to help pupils analyse their own health and fitness. Health-related fitness has been a new area in the school. We've just started it for the first time this year. So we're trying to develop it and improve it step by step. It's also important for pupils to be taught how to use new pieces of software. These pupils are designing and making costumes to wear for the local Caribbean carnival. The project makes good use of their existing IT skills, but it also gives one group the opportunity to use desktop publishing for the first time. Once they've grasped the way the program works, they'll be able to teach other members of the class. Do you remember the hat we're drilling? Learning how to use content-free software, like this DTP programme, is crucial for progressing through the national curriculum. Designing. So can you start off by loading the disk up, please? The fact that pupils start with a blank screen is seen as a definite advantage by IT coordinator Brian Fawcett. The blank screen approach is useful because it, it asks for the children to, to provide something from them rather than the computer asking for a specific answer. It also means that it fits in very well with any of the work that we happen to be doing. It doesn't matter whether it's a historical topic or a geographical topic, it fits in with anything. What else have the children gained from using IT? Well, the children have gained a lot more in self-confidence in using the computer. 
They've also been able to see a project through right from the design stage right through to the end product. And they'll be actually wearing the designs on Saturday, which is great. students' understanding of IT no longer as a toy but as a tool uh, is, is really the, the, the key uh, issue. The ability to be able to say what if, to set up some sort of system, whether it be in a database or a spreadsheet or simply in terms of presentation, what if I change the font on here, what, what will it look like? Please now, can you go into the garden? In special schools, developing IT capability has a number of additional benefits. It's a white one and a, a yellow one. OK, and bring them back to class. Take we are encouraging staff here to produce pieces of software for an individual pupil or for a specific lesson. So children can really record what they've just done and all the words are at their level. You've got pictures if they can't read and then they can all produce a piece of work unaided, which really gives them a good sense of achievement. It's something that they have really done themselves. Youngsters really enjoy using information technology and very often achieve much more than perhaps we believe they were capable of achieving. The National Curriculum Programmes of Study for IT Capability provide the structure for teachers to ensure their pupils get the best out of information technology. And the widgets going to cast a spell on the dragon. So it's part of all the other resources that you have, but it's quite an important resource because it's so much more powerful. You need to spend time showing children how to use it. Once they know, and children become experts very quickly on the computer, you can actually step back and they will carry on and they will produce some pretty amazing things.